ain't going back. Now I'm gonna buy into all that. Hey, hey, ain't gonna hide. Gonna let all the fears lie. Got mother, they just saw my side. Got all of the love and go inside. All right, hello, everyone. Welcome once again to the new now. I'm delighted to have a first time situation here with us. I'm back again with Harold Cotts. Oh, I'm back again with Harold Cotts. I guess we got a bit of a delay in uh, in some of the voices here. And we are here with Frank. Frank and I have done a couple of chats on Psychonauts Gone Wild. And I wanted to invite Harold along to get his uh, professional perspective on this interesting situation. So Frank, Frank seems to have an unwanted, uninvited guest in his consciousness, in his body, according to him. So maybe Frank, you could give myself and Harold a little bit of a background as to uh, you know how you ended up in the situation you're in right now. So Harold can get a, a bit of a, of, a, of a feeling for what's going on since this is his first time here. Yeah, sure. Um, I worked with psychedelics and about three years ago I had uh, what, many believe and what I believe is a entity from another dimension attach itself to my consciousness. Uh, I was basically um, felt like I was probed by aliens, some sort of aliens. Um, I'm feeling a lot of side effects. Um, um, what else? Um, I don't want to run through everything in detail. They can yeah, maybe give us a bit, a bit of a synopsis. Yeah. yeah, a bit of a short synopsis. Yeah. So, um, yeah, since this has happened, I've, I've had a constant energy field around my body, um, which gets a lot stronger if alter my consciousness within, with any substance, and that includes alcohol and cannabis, anything. Um, and this has been a, not so, no pain or anything. I've gotten used to it over the last three years, but about um, almost 12 months ago, I suppose, eight months ago, uh, everything changed where that energy shifted to one side of my body. And it's quite, and it's making all my glands on one side of my body, all my muscles swell up. So I'm, and it's quite uncomfortable sometimes. Um, um, yeah, I reached out to the psychedelic community for help. They just they judged me to be um, crazy, I suppose. I reached out to the paranormal community. They were very judgmental about the substances used. Um, <laughs> I've reached out to all the universities, scientists and institutions um, researching this subject and, you know, they only have one thing and, you know, that that's their goal is to get psychedelics decriminalised so they have no interest in my story, um, you know, and to be honest, if someone came to me, and which did many years ago at my first ayahuasca ceremony in Peru, um, came to me and said, you know, they had three evil spirits inside of them, inside of them and I actually thought well they're crazy you know I didn't sort of take much of it so yeah and I've traveled to Peru saw some shamans where I saw um, supernatural paranormal things happen which you know um, conclusively conclusively um, um, knowledge to me that this was not a mental health issue that this was very real and quite unique so yeah so I've been sort of um, living my life the best I can I don't use any substances. I, I'm not a drinker of alcohol anyhow. Um, I've recently given up cannabis, which was helping me sleep, um, which now the side effects of the dreams and, and the things happening um, is pretty enorm. Um, the lucid dreaming uh, about things that happen in my life, um, whether they be in the past or the future. Um, yeah, so it's quite, you know, I'm... With the cannabis use, the problem with me is probably more cons than uh, than pros. So I'm sort of bearing, you know, I'm putting up with the with the um, cons at the moment of or the yeah the cons of not smoke uh, using cannabis, which uh, I have nothing against psychedelics, um, you know, but I do and I don't think they should be illegal. But I think if they weren't illegal, um, there's going to be a lot more substance abuse in the psychedelic community because, let's be honest, there's not many people that are spiritual anymore using psychedelics, um, which is, you know, the case many, uh, many years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Now it's just, just young people and anybody just, you know, researching Joe Rogan and, and um, Terence McKenna and all they hear is how wonderful it is and you know, it's all subjective, you know, except the healing. The healing's not subjective. The healing's real, but the entities aren't. They're just... 
they're just hallucinations. You know, it's, it's crazy. Well, you know, Terrence mm-hmm. McKenna passed with brain cancer. So that kind of tells you that story. Uh, like Harold, do you have any um, insights, questions, directions that? Mm. Just to, to introduce my point of view, I did a lot of healing work. I always kind of canceled out pulling entities because especially when you do work on seminars, it's okay kind of to be responsible for one person. But if you pull something and then you've got 12 people around that could recollect it, you take responsibilities I was not willing to take. So I always said before starting, we can do everything, but I'm not the exorcist. So we don't pull anything out of anyone. And then, funnily, the universe started to arrange topics for me. So I didn't even have a choice what to do on what seminar because the people brought the topics. And every seminar was a clear um, um, sum of cases that fitted onto one specific topic. And one of the seminars, it was all about uh, people being possessed by all sorts of entities and universe didn't let me go without learning to deal with them. So that was actually the work of one weekend. But after that weekend, I'm not afraid anymore to touch the topic. And normally everything that is in and is not welcome is out when we are done. So maybe you want to make it a, a live healing session <laughs> unless you like the guy and want to spend the rest of your life with him like a married couple. <laughs> what do you think, Frank? So do you mean right now? Is that what you mean, Harold? Having our, our so-called live healing session, see, see what happens? No, not right, right now, because I, I really would love to talk a bit before. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, the uh, past... The, sorry. The past week, I've been looking at some of Harold's work, and I'm quite, it's quite quite interesting to me because I've researched a lot of subjects that um, that Harold's researched and experienced in, and uh, I can see some connections in a lot of things. One of the things is when you talk about insects, uh, mm. insectoids and stuff, um, when this happened to me, I saw um, I saw uh, I was under DMT and the I was watching it with my eyes closed when it come on and you have the kaleidoscope and something I've never seen before. There was like insects coming up, like circling up, like uh, coming closer and closer, like a spider and spider web going round and round. They look like similar. The way I can describe them is red ants. Okay. And they got mm-hmm. closer and closer until one hit my mouth, and then I re- my reaction was to open my eyes. And there was actually a few of them. I opened my eyes, and the whole room was full of them. My body was full of them. I was flicking them off my body everywhere. Uh, it was very real and very uh, I've never seen this before. And I mm-hmm. actually put a connection um, to this. Mm. So we are, we are talking about one or more than one Yabulon? God of Freemasonry, yeah. the spider demon. Maybe you can it's, explain it's, us sorry. You're, you're it's, it's, a bit. it's like like I'm aware of three different types of archons. These are kind of the intelligent entities that belong to the satanic biosphere. And we, we do have Yabulon, the spider god. This is kind of the god of Freemasonry also utilized in um, chemtrailing produced by Morgellon fruiting bodies. They breed those types of archons. Um, we have the Khtulhu. This is kind of not sure how they multiply, but they are completely responsible for any hierarchy between humans. If you have any... Um, human relationship that runs on control and obedience patterns, you can be sure that there are um, one of those in between organizing the control grids. And we have what we know from from Paradise Garden, uh, the snake, also in Eastern tradition known as Kundalini and Tumu snakes. So these are kind of the three intelligent ones 
um, you meet basically on daily on daily basis. So how long ago did you have this experience, Frank, that you just mentioned with the uh, with the ants? I think we've lost you. I can't hear you anymore, Frank. Can't hear you, Frank. This happens pretty much every time we chat. <laughs> So while he's coming in, what what do you think is going on specifically? Do you have any ideas or any 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 uh, mm -hmm. educated guesses? From like he's looks got... like he he captured a, a spider. It's it's common. It's not um, not rare. I mean, all the fanatic Muslim uh, jihad warriors have a spider, and. Uh, um, every culture that is based on circumcision or other mutilating rituals have spiders in. So it's not kind of an extraordinary thing to have one, but it's rare that they communicate with their hosts. So that's kind of the interesting point. Yes, yes. So we still don't have you, Frank. I don't know if you want to go out and come back, perhaps. That's worked before. And you he, he can't. He can't hear us as well. So I don't know. Let me just see something. I'll try and chat with him here. Perhaps go out in. I can't hear you, Frank, at all at the moment. Oh, so maybe that'll work. So basically, uh, like you've never talked with anyone before that's had them uh, chatting with the, the host, Harold? Not as a long-term relationship. I mean, uh, before they go, we, we always have direct communication. We ask them if they want to be dissolved or if they want to be connected to the divine. Right. Uh, so we give them choices, they answer. But it depends on kind of the, the quality of clairvoyance people bring. Um, it's more on the human side, the question, how much do people get? Right. So what do you mean? Do you mean how much that they want to talk with uh, their... Uh... No, the, the, the ability of perception on the human side is different from human to human. Oh, you mean, okay. So what they pick up from, from mm. having this kind of uh, an investation, so to speak. Yep. Yeah. So, and um, as far as I remember, Frank said he can get yes and no's yes. kind of by a controlled hand. Yeah. And this is um, a good communication line if you want to ask a lot of questions that can be answered by yes or no. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious Me too. Um, to have one that's not kind of a scared shit that he's going to be burned down by a violet flame. And, and do you think uh, that this is the kind of like a common sort of, of like, like most people have crazy thoughts in their heads, let's say on a daily basis, everyone mm -hmm. I've pretty much everyone I've talked with, you know, uh, has those unwelcome, uh, you know, uh, negative emotional, uh, I would say that that come from somewhere else, like, you know, you kill someone or don't do this, or you hate someone, or you want to argue, you know, whatever it comes down to, do you think they're all related to this specific kind of, um, Archon, the one or the other type. Uh, again, it's it's a question. How... Again, it's it's a question. How... Okay, that was an echo. Um, okay, that was an echo. Um, you have to turn off your outside speakers, Frank. You have to turn off your outside speakers. You're, you're echoing. Yeah, I, I had the headphone. You, you, you need your headphones, or else we're going to echo the whole time. Yeah, I've had them in, right? But the sound ain't coming through the computer. But and for me, then it's plugged in. Headphones are plugged in, but the whole time, it's like the headphones aren't working. 
But and this I'm hearing you go through the computer. Okay. But this way we're going to echo. So yeah, we need you to plug your headphones into the computer. Can you plug your headphones into the computer, Frank? Yeah, they are. So as we're sitting here, Harold, this happens every single time we've chatted. <laughs> Do you, do you think it's it's an interference? Or... I've got the headphones plugged in, but it's like a... it's, it's an interference or... Mm. or 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 simple lack of understanding in this world, let's say, by the participators. Um, it happens that the communications break down when you do certain things. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you, and you're coming through fine. You keep cutting in and out. I can hear you. Yeah, you keep cutting in and out. Right. Fine. Okay. I've changed it to save same as system instead of headphones and speakers. Okay. See if that works for you. But you guys seem to be cutting out a couple of seconds. and. I think that's on your end, Frank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think it's on your end that the challenge is. I think that's on your end, Frank. Uh, yeah, I think it's on your end. So let's you and I chat for a moment here, Harold, while he's figuring a few things out. Mm -hmm. This happens every single time we chat. It's just crazy. And I have, you know, I do dozens of these as you do as well. And it doesn't happen with anyone else. It's every single time we chat. It's just crazy. And I have, you know, I do dozens of these as you do as well. And it doesn't happen with anyone else. So what do you think? What's your professional opinion on this? Besides the fact it seems to be a comedy show for me at times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to throw asparagus at anyone or get the, you know, Frank in trouble, but do you think it's a communication thing or do you think it's a something else? Um, the broken line and the echo? Yeah. I don't know. Either something is not plugged in properly or set up properly on Frank's end. Or sometimes, I mean, um, uh, those beings are binary. And they live in electronics. Right. So if his little friend doesn't want to be the star of the show, <laughs> mm -hmm. it should be easy for him to, to manipulate technology in that way. Ah, uh, Yeah, yeah. I, I've thought of that as mm -hmm. well. So, Frank, have you changed your settings on your side in the Zoom? Sometimes I think it's a consciousness thing, to be perfectly honest, between you and I. I mean, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, you're you're being a scientist. I think you can kind of tell in actions and in actions what's coherently accomplished, let's say, and what isn't. You know, is about the is, mm. is is how I'll put this. I'm I'm pretty sure yeah. you understand what I mean. I think uh, you know. Do you think sometimes, let's say, when people have these experiences for a long time, it negatively affects their ability to be coherent in this world? I don't know. Normally, we consider them to be genius mm. because genie is what the name genius is derived from. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> At least in the Arabic tradition. Okay. So I'm going to put this back to Harold right now. So this, for me, it's very interesting that you mentioned there's three kinds of archons of, of the major types that infest this world in various permutations for various outcomes. You know, as you said, so the hierarchy you mentioned, the, the spider ones, and you mentioned another one. What, what was the third one? I missed um, that one. Kund Kundalini and Tomu Snake. So that's the one that gets kind involved of, in reproduction, the the the, the sexuality mm, of humanity. Or? Sexuality is between the spiders and the snakes. Main uh, function of the snakes is to bypass the heart, ah, so that you have sense. direct interaction between head and sexual chakra. So that's the kundalini one, you mean? Yep. And that's bypass the kundalini. Ah, it's so, bypassing the heart with everything, which is obviously not so loving. <laughs> Putting it bluntly. It has consequences, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do, let, maybe you can unmute yourself now, Frank, if you want to chat. And let's see if you're echoing again or not. If you push your little unmute button there on your on the left side of your head, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what I would suggest, because it doesn't work mm -hmm. that way, 
um, Frank, mm. I, I would okay. share a very well, simple... Because it doesn't can, work that way. Can, can, can you um, mute him? Frank, I, I would share a very simple... Can, can, okay. can, can you mute him? Yeah, he's okay. muted, yes. Okay, um, I can share a very simple technique to get rid of your guest. Because he came in due to a ceremony. He was not invited. He doesn't hold a contract. And the moment entities don't hold a contract, like you said, I want you in, this is a way to identify with the entity. And then he's part of your spirit. And then you can't get him out that easily. But if he's getting in without invitation and contract, he's an add-on. He's an independent entity, and then the trick works. And what we, what you do is basically you stand somewhere in a free space in your room where you can move around a little bit. You close your eyes, and you visualize a, a triangular cage around your body, like a triangle on the ground, lying on the ground, triangle hovering above your head, three upright bars connecting the two triangles, or if you had a, have a, a lot of space, you can also use a triangular pyramid, works as well. And while visualizing it, what you say as an affirmation is, I create a trinary cage. And you do it from your heart. You breathe yourself into the center of your body. Affirmations work when they're heart-based. And then you create a structure in the astral realm that is for the entity impossible to leave. A trinary cage is capturing them. They're in, they can't get out because they are binary. Everything trinary is dissolving their structure. So if they want to survive, they need to stay in the cage. If you look at it on the astral plane, it looks like a crystal, transparent crystal where they are in the crystal and can't leave the block. And then very easily what you do is you leave. You basically, before you leave, you just affirm again, I fix this trinary cage to the ground so that it can't move with me. And then you simply step out of it, turn around. And normally if it, because you're well connected with it, normally with people who just get those things out of their body, they can easily see what they captured in the cage. 90, 95% of the people who do that turn around and they see what they've got. And then you can continue like um, years ago, it was always, you know, just the violet flame burning them to ash. Yeah, um, as a shamanic technique for cleansing a space. Violet flame is destroying binary beings. Uh, we did that because a couple of years ago, they were not into healing. If they got caught, they wanted to end. They wanted to be assassinated. There was no, no, no um, desire on their end to get somewhere else. By now, it has completely changed. And those entities want to be reconnected to source because their entire biosphere is reconnecting. And the word is spoken and is around that it's possible, you can survive it, you get an eternal soul in return, and you can reincarnate as a normal being, not as this stupid mortal astral projection. So most of them are in when you ask them, do you want to survive? And this is, you know, it's a form of life. So why shouldn't we be gentle with them, even if they're bugging our ass sometimes? <laughs> and if if you want to ask the question, normally I don't even ask anymore by now. You can ask and get a yes or a no for destruction or survival. And if it's for survival, you invite a beam of light from upstairs hitting the cage and then pulling the entire cage with content up like in an elevator. It's called an elevator of growth. It's an instant karma machine delivered by source. They capture the entities, they don't let them out during the process, and then they are 
pulled up and during the ascension they are experiencing like forced karma everything they did they re-experience it so when they arrive upstairs their spirit is cleared and um, I've seen even archons going into the beam of light out of free will, no cage around them, in complete ecstasy. Um, can't wait to get there, kind of. So um, this should be the easiest way to, to get rid of the problem, if you like to. If it doesn't work, either you need to work on your capacity to affirm in the heart space, you know, if you, I love doing that comedy thing. Um, if you are completely mentalized and you have that tiny little head voice, there's no way to make an affirmation that works because you're just brain and brain doesn't create, mm. you know. And if you control your voice from the head, you sound a little bit more mm. adult, but it doesn't mm. work as well. But if you talk from here, it's a completely different ball game. What you say is... This is our heart space. So get yourself there when you affirm. And if it should not work, then you can be 100% sure you're sitting off on a fucking contract. Whatever you said, mumbled, did on, on drugs is a clear invitation to ask him in. And if this should be the case, you need to cancel the contract first and then do the trinary cage. And it's easy, you know? Canceling a contract with the argument, sorry, I was drugged, I was not myself. It's a legal case you have already won. It's like in court. The astral realm is a big courtroom. Doing things out of love counts. Doing things because you, was, you were misguided and uh, lied to is a valid argument. Being on drugs is a valid argument. It was not your free choice, so your spirit cannot be forced by universe to stay in that trap. And then the entire spooky thing should be over. Unless you want to have him in as some form of ambassador and keep communicating with him. Interesting thing as well, they're not our enemies anymore. From my point of observing kind of a healing process on the collect on the collective realm. Satan is back to source. He's healed. He's gone. But the entire thing was not possible with him taking his archons with him because this would have left humanity without a shadow. And the humanity that is spirit-wise lost and has no shadow to force it into healing processes is not going to self-heal. So the Archons volunteered to stay here to help humans to basically hold that space of subconsciousness and trigger kind of bad things to make them restage traumas to finally learn their lesson. And then when the lesson is learned, there's no more use for the Archon and he can ascend. And they volunteered to stay with us until humanity as a species is completely back in the divine order. And then they will be home. Um, so there's not really, if, if you look from that perspective, anything evil about them anymore. If you are in a lower vibration and you're still basically fighting your own shadow, and then you will experience the Archon as an enemy or someone to control, rule, and manipulate you because he's just uh, trying to get the shit out of you. Um, so this is my advice. And on the seminar, it's uh, an absolutely secured mode. Nothing can go wrong. 100% success rate. And then the little friend might be out and it's not it's really not i don't know if you could listen to that before it's not uncommon to have them all uh, cultures that run on circumcision rituals have them in muslims have them in all of them jews have them in the male ones all of them uh, 
Freemasons have them. Every Morgellon suffer is a mothership of those things. Um, and if you do a little mistake, even if you're not one of this list, it's very easy to get them somewhere into a position. The last one I captured was not captured. I, I got infected with, um, I did a tiny little mistake. I was clean, no archons in me anymore. And um, I did kind of my first healing, one-on-one -on -one healing sessions. And all I did was basically splitting off part of my consciousness to observe myself while I'm doing a healing session to judge if I do everything according to the rules. Just like a little security checkup uh, in between me and myself. And just the fact that I was willing to be judgmental against myself opened the gap to let that spider in. And he, he, he got in and he started to basically overwhelm me with positive judgment to strengthen his own position. And he was manipulating the entire healing processes. The entire three days I worked, I had a, a lecture and then many, many people asked, could we have one-on-one -on -one sessions? And I said, okay, I'll stay a couple more of more days. And then I had a royal flash in healing sessions and everything was fake just because this stupid thing communicated with the other archons in my clients to simulate perfect healing conditions like a lady looking like that half blind being able to see after 20 minutes completely symmetric face again um, miracles happened and my judgment thing went berserk like wow are you the best healer of the world just for the little thing to sneak in and take a position where I initially identified with, giving myself this positive judgment. So it's, you know, it has nothing to do with the evil to be vulnerable. It's just a tiny little incoherent spot in your bioenergetics where you have an opening or a cut or a split or anything that is not in perfect order. And in the ritual way, it is done that way intentionally, circumcision. You create a trauma where they can creep in easily. But many, many people just have them. So it's it's not unusual. It's unusual that people are conscious enough to realize that it's not them. Because normally it's just one big mess in humans' heads. You have a voice in your head, so that's you. Oh, I've got a thought. Fucking hell, it's not a thought. It's an archon talking in you. Mm. But how do you see the difference? You seem to be aware enough that you realize, oops, this is not me. So I guess you have some heart connection. Yeah. Um, and then, actually, it should be easy to get it out again. So if you want to chat at all, Frank, you know, please unmute yourself and talk. Also, from the instructions, Harold showed, obviously, I'll upload this video so you can watch it, you know, as many times as you need also, to, to pick up from the instructions, Harold showed, obviously, I'll upload this video so you can watch it, you know, as many times as you need to, to pick up. So maybe we won't talk when you're talking, and then we'll have to unmute you again. Did you want to ask Harold any questions? So maybe we won't talk when you're talking, and then we'll have to unmute you again. Yeah. I want to ask questions. yeah, I do feel that um, I invited it in um, because after the original, the original event, um, I believe because it was a human from the future, I wanted to make contact. So I redid the process a week later where the whole week I felt clean. There was nothing, you know, I felt empty. And I really believe this was a human from the future. And I was inviting it in. I took more substance to get it in me. And then it entered me. And it hasn't left me like the energy is inside me. Not like it was for the first week where it was dormant. Uh, I feel like it was a process where um, I got infiltrated. I got probed. It was in me. And I couldn't feel it. And then I, w and, and then I was believing it was a human future. And all week I was excited. I wanted to make contact. I wanted to make contact again so I do feel that I invited it in um, mm. a lot of what you, you say makes total sense to me um, mm. 
but I don't know, you know, I've just recently done a mace energy therapy and I, you know, I listen to your work as well in how the only place that I can't touch is the heart. And I think that's the case with me because my heart is true. It's good. Um, but it seems to be able to control every other part of my body. Um, mm. And so, yeah, I do feel it's like a contract. It's, you know, mm. and I'm, mm. I'm really, you know, I feel like my side effects, I've, I've done something mm. to my HT receptors. Um, the students believe um, there's a gateway or a doorway, a connection open somehow um, because they believe they got the navy, they were easy enough to get back in. Mm. Okay. Can you mute again so that I can talk? Yeah, I have done that. Okay. Um, so you, you, you do have a contract, but it's a weak one. You can just uh, declare it closed um, because you decide so, you know? You allowed it to get in for a period of time. You didn't say you can live in me for eternity to the end of this lifetime and all coming lifetimes or anything of that sort. You just said, yeah, come in, guy. And then you say, okay, I've got, I had enough of this fusion and now I want you out. So I declare our contract to be fulfilled. Done. And then you can... Utilize the trick with a cage. Maybe you send me an email to let me know if it worked, if you do it. Yes. I would love to hear myself about your experience. You know, uh, mm. maybe you can record a video yourself or we can chat again. Or, you know, as I said, or Harold can just simply share with me how, how it went, if, if it's allowed that you guys can share or not if it's personal uh, you know whatever whatever is uh, more comfortable for you frank is is fine of course uh do you have any other questions for harold in relation to this so unmute yourself if you want to chat any any time and then we'll mute you when it's time for us to talk um i feel like i understand what you're saying you know i will do the process but i feel like i've done a sort of you know I've done this, I've, I've, I've tried so many things to get it out, you know, of me positive and coming from my heart, you know, um, and saying I don't want, you know, you in me anymore, you know, things have really, I've, I feel like the process what Harold is describing um, is not far different to what I've, I've been doing, you know, in certain ways um, in trying to get this thing out of me and, you know, in the communication, but it just... It, You know, I'm at a point where I don't feel anything's going to work. You know, I've tried so many things. Um, although I am positive, I'm, you know, I'm not pessimistic or anything, but I'm, I'm more of a realist, you know, in, in what's happened and what I've you know, been through and what I've tried to get it out. <laughs> I've, I've looked at this at so many different angles. Um, it's just, I, I don't feel that there's anything physical or mentally that I do to get it out. Um, I try and you know, stay positive when I'm doing it, but deep down, deep down, I just just through my experience, that it's just it's just uh, I feel like it, my case is very different. I'm not sure if Harold has watched my videos. Um, you know of this thing. Have you watched Harold or you know? Mm -hmm. it, um, have you seen like it? Send, I'll send you a text message. I'll mute myself. Okay, his mic is off. We can chat again. So are you saying that's the Archon mm. talking? That was clearly the Archon talking. Clearly, yeah, because it makes no sense. Yes. It's confusing. It's contradictory. It says I've tried everything and there's nothing I can do, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to be out. So yeah. um, this, this is so typical. I, I even with the other with the other entities, um, th they come up with stories that are so brilliant and so convincing. The only thing you can judge is the outcome. So mm. now the outcome of you speaking was, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> you you need to learn to judge it by the outcome. But what they can't control is the facial expressions. So if last time we did a lot of snake removal and then something went wrong and the snake was pretending to not be in anymore 
said something and then it went like (laughs) 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 so they have a hard time to hide themselves if you're a little experienced Uh, frank it's really no big thing it it's 100 percent reliable i didn't lose a single attempt of getting things out and if it didn't work it needed to find the contract to solve the contract and then it did work didn't lose a single client i did hundreds so i think what harold's saying is if you try you may find yourself surprised at the success you know irregardless of what might come out of your mouth next that says you shouldn't try or you haven't tried or you mm. can't try or you've tried a hundred times really doesn't matter mm. you know I, I i haven't had the same experiences as harold but i have talked with many people that have told me they want to be healing or they want to be loved or they want to be healthy or they want you know something they don't have and you will share some direct easy to follow advice like you know, stop drinking so much and you won't be drunk, you know, as, 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 as a way out there example. And then they give you a hundred reasons why they have to drink or why red wine is healthy for them or, you know, whatever. Mm. And, you know, the bottom. Yeah. I'm, yeah. The, the second thing you need to always regard with entities is the hidden profit. Mm. If over the time you were basically buddies, you gained some hidden profit from the relationship, like public attention, or uh, um, just attention or meaning to your life or whatever it might be. The moment he's out, you lose that. Yeah. So um, that could be a subconscious reason to go into um, turning yourself into a hopeless case without even trying. Um but this is a choice, you know, if you're clear with, you see, with with self-healing techniques, this is kind of one of the self-healing techniques because no one else is pulling it out. Five years ago, I would have come over and pulled it out forcefully. Don't do that anymore. Um, um, with every self-healing step, you go through four different phases of um, manifestation and creation. You you come to an understanding of the situation. You make your mental analysis and you, you define your intention. So be very clear about all aspects of your intention. You know, I want to lose that demonic possession I have. I want to go back into a quiet space where I do not get public attention, where I'm not kind of the joker on the internet that has something funny to present. Everything that is involved, be clear about the consequences of your intention. Then you take that intention to your solar plexus. And when you feel about the consequences of this uh, possible of this intention it's not a decision yet it's just the intention you test the intention in the solar plexus if you get the will to simply execute then you can proceed if you get anger you're still projecting on someone you need to take more responsibility for the halabalu you're in if what you find is anger, you know, if what you find is fear, you also need to go back because there's something, some consequences about the decision you do not see yet. So it is passing the solar plexus with a clear, I want to. If you find that I want to, you go to the heart space, And in the heart space, being centered there, you make the decision. I expel my archon now. And then with this decision made directly after or during or whatever, you need to come into some form of action. It can be affirming things. It can be making a symbolic gesture. And it doesn't really matter if this 
act you do is perfect as a motion pattern. For example, if someone is switched, that he's laughing when he's supposed to be sad and he's crying when he could be happy. Hundreds, tons of people out there are switched because this is something you learn as a survival mode in toxic childhoods. Yeah. So you become aware that you are switched. You go into your stomach and feel how would it be like um, to be upright and give exactly the emotion that is correct in the space. Does it scare me? Yes or no? Am I still just angry about my parents and not kind of concerned about my own well-being? Then you need to go back to make more mental work. So you test that. And then you make the decision. I switch back to normal function. And you take a compass needle in your body and you turn it around. This is the action. There is no compass needle. But it's the language the universe understands. Intention, will, decision, action. If you miss out on one of the four, you're not manifesting, you're not creating. This is basically all you need to know about your inner powers. And it's both the healer and the creator. So take care of those steps and it will work. When I'm around, I kind of take care of that part. Um, when I'm around, I kind of take care of that part. Did you want to say something, Frank? Hmm? Um, Did you want to say something, Frank? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, um, yeah, I can understand in, um, what Harold's saying and can see. Um, but yeah, maybe I have, you know, I have... Um, more intention into it, and more positivity into it, and more uh, belief into it. Um, and I just want to say these troubles we're having with the internet. I've been on Skype, have had Skype interviews and stuff this week, and more app, and it works perfectly. It only seems to be when we speak. Um, you know, it's, I was just thinking about that. I've actually had Skype interviews, and, and it's just, it's perfect. It's not wrong. Uh, so it just seems a bit strange to me. Um, whether it's, you know, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'll definitely um, uh, go through and re listen to everything Harold said and in a positive way, in a you know, mm -hmm. positive manner, uh, practice this and see what happens. Um, but also, just as if, if Harold has seen the videos on my, you know, this thing, because I haven't seen, you know, anything like it before, and neither, neither have a lot of other people. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really not a bit big thing. It's a five minute act to get it done. If you're clearly set forward and there's no hesitation internally that you question things and um, then it's done within five, five minutes. I think it's a matter of, you know, not positivity or not, or belief or not even trying harder or any of those things. I think those are all, in my opinion, distractions from getting it done because that's the archon. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing my best. Yep. I'm trying yeah. my hardest. I'm trying to throw the spoon to the, to the floor, you know, yeah, it's impossible. Either you throw it or you keep it in your hand, but you cannot try to do something. This is archon thinking. Mm. Human thinking is done. I've heard from so many people. I'll try. We'll see. I'll give it a shot. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and it doesn't work. You know, you, you can't try it. As Harold said, you, you have to do things or you don't. And, and, you know, the archon takes you away from your heart and from yourself with these suppositions, right? And with these so-called mm. uh, illusionary uh, efforts where you can pat yourself on the back later and go, well, I tried. Or, well... You know, I'm a little better today than I was yesterday, but, you know, it, it's mm. really simple what Harold suggested, in my opinion, straightforward, really, even for such a complicated yeah. problem. Yeah, and, and there's no, you can't do it halfway, you can't do it a little bit, either yes or no, either done or not done, simple options, possibilities, outcomes, and no big thing about it, no, no, 
shouldn't even be a topic. You know, like when, when I go to the garden and I, I capture a, a, a tick, <laughs> I'm not sitting there observing it, <laughs> thinking if I'm going to be bitten in five minutes or in 10 minutes or only overnight. And then it's not that I would try to, to maybe move it a little bit. You rip it down from your leg. And with ticks, not with archons. Archons deserve a little bit more respect, but it's all in the manual. I think one of the key points, Frank, that, that Harold made, if I may paraphrase, is you have to be willing to give up the attention you might be getting from having this problem. You know, if that's something you're enjoying, you know, the videos, you, you've asked Harold several times if he's seen your video with your DMT. But, you know, uh, but so it's really, I, I, I can understand, you know, but you, you've got to ask yourself, right, if it's mm. something that. It's, it's, it's poisoning the intention if you don't have that clear. Mm. It's poisoning the intention and then the entire magic of creation and manifestation doesn't work. Because it's not what you say, it's what you intend. And if this is why you need to be clear about the consequences. It's not what you say, it's what you intend. This is why you need to be clear about the consequences. And I just want to say that I'm, I'm an introvert. The last thing I want is public attention. It's me talking. I've always been like this. I know this. I'm mm, not. Good. I'm not getting. Um, you know, I may get some dopamine uh, effect from some of the attention I'm getting, but mm. I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it, and I it's just not me. You know, I get mm. enough attention, and I really want this thing out in part. But those things, those you know, about getting the attention and, and stuff, I really believe uh, it's the last thing I want. Even before it's happened, the last thing I want to do is be online, you know, my face online, and it's just not me. And I'm really I'm quite, what's the word? I'm quite, um, I'm, I'm quite, um, you know, I don't like this attention. I don't like it. I'm, I'm, I'm not shy, but I'm, like I said, I'm an introvert. And it's not me. And I understand what you're saying, that this could be the case, but it's, I really know that this is my own. I, sometimes Good. I don't Good. go online because yeah. I, I, the comment of, of the, even I'm getting no negative Good. comments. Good. I've been no negative comments. It's all positive. Mm. Even I just don't want to look because, you know, what, mm. I'm not interested in what people are saying. Just in, yeah. in finding help in different ways and yeah. theory, what it is and how to get it out. That's my yeah, intention. I, my intention. It's been three years. It's been, I, could have gone, I could have gone public like years ago. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just trying to address all possible obstacles. That's all. I muted him again so, so you can. All oh. possible. Okay. Yeah. Guys. I think this is what, what we can do for today. Okay, I appreciate it. Harold, I will, thank you. I will join the most beautiful woman of the world in my bed now. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Harold. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it, it's it's something that uh, I think a lot of people can get some good information from. Uh, so I'll leave uh, you with that. Join your beautiful so woman. I know it's late for you. Thank you so much, Harold. I appreciate your chat. And I hope you know we'll uh, be able to I'll carry on with more stuff. At some point, you're a woman. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. See you, Frank. You know, we'll carry on with more stuff. Okay. So, Frank, what I'm going to do is, you know, you don't have to go yet. Let me, just let me finish up here with you. I'm going to put this up soon. You know, I'll, I'll give you the link. I will also share your links once again from your other videos so people can see it. And then, uh, you know, give it a shot, so to speak, or give it three shots, try it out. I recommend, you know, what Harold recommended and see how that goes for you. And, you know, feel free to share uh, an email with me and I can send it along to Harold. I'd like to ask um, Harold, but um, my phone. Well, hold on. Okay, so I muted you a second. So what I suggest, put it in an email, put it in an okay here an email, 
and I can send it along to him. You know, nothing's lost. You know, I could say perhaps having pure intent for wanting to help people with the archons or get their, you know, negative energies fixed or what have you. Maybe it, it really doesn't want to talk to people like myself or people like Harold. So you're having more internet problems. I'm not sure. Or as Harold said, check your intent. Make sure you really want to get rid of it. You know, there's nothing to say right now, but, you know, to put down your feelings, to try it and see what happens and then see where it takes you. And if you find yourself for any reason making excuses or, you know, I've done it before or reasons that, in my opinion, there's no better advice you're going to get than what you just got from Harold. You know, especially since, as he said, it's worked, you know, hundreds of times for other people. So why not give it a shot, see what happens. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I do wish we could talk to Frank more, but it seems that the connections for whatever various reasons are not allowing us to do so, but I'll get this up. If anyone has any questions or suggestions, let me know. Any questions for Frank, let me know. Please like and subscribe, all those lovely things. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon. Frank, I appreciate your time here. You know, thank you for sharing once again. You know, perhaps one day, maybe we'll figure out a way to get a really good connection and we can have another chat. I'd be happy for that as well. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye Frank. Can't make me lie, lie to my heart. No one tells me where I should start.